Hello! Today we are going to be painting a watercolor succulent in Procreate. Before we move to the iPad, let's go over what you'll need for this. To draw the actual succulent, I'm going to be using my succulent builder kit, which is a paid brush set of succulent leaf stamps. If you want to get this, it is linked in the description below. You can also use any sketch of a succulent and jump ahead to follow the watercolor. The watercolor brush that we're using today is free. It's available to my newsletter subscribers. If you're not already subscribed, you can sign up below to get that. And then you'll also be able to access the paper texture and the color palette and tons of other great freebies. If you are jumping ahead to the watercolor part, there will be chapters set up in the video. So you should be able to just hover over on the timeline bar of the video to jump to the section that you want. With all that said, let's jump into it. For this succulent, I'm going to be using the Avifurum leaves, which are the more rounded succulent leaves in the set. I like to start with the smaller, more rounded leaves because they're a bit more of a foreshortened perspective, so they work really well right in the center. Using leaf 28, I'm gonna stamp this right in the middle. And then in my layers panel, I'm going to immediately add a new blank layer above this one. You can see in my layers panel that I am working in a file that has a paper texture set up. And then I also have some painting layers designated below these layers, but I'm just going to be using one layer to build the succulent. And then I will add a new one and merge as I go. Now on this new layer, I am going to add in a second leaf using leaf 22. I've decided that this one is going to sit behind the first leaf. So that would make it further away from me. As you go building the plant, deciding which leaves are closer and further away is a really key part of building the plant itself. Next, I can erase the part of this leaf that would be hidden from view from behind the first leaf. I am going to use the soft airbrush to erase. You can really use any eraser that you want, And then I'm also going to erase the triangle indicators from both layers. Next, I'm going back into the layers panel and I'm going to pinch to merge these two together and add in a new empty layer above this one. For the next leaf, I'm gonna use leaf 34. When I'm building the center, more younger part of the succulent, if you will, I like to use these shorter, more teardrop shaped leaves because on a real plant, the leaves grow continually out from the center. So these are always the shortest, chubbiest little leaves. Then as the leaves grow and mature, they spread out, but of course they stay connected to the plant stem. So to stay connected and still get sunlight, they become longer and often a little more curved. So this set has a mix of both kinds of leaves. For this one, I'm going to use leaf nine, and I know automatically that I wanna rotate this to reposition it. As you're using this kit, don't hesitate to use the transform tool to rotate, flip, or even warp the leaves into what you want and need. The triangle indicator is there as a suggestion for where you should initially place it, but really it just shows you what the outside of the plant is. So there are no rules, basically. Next, I'm pinching to merge the layers together, and now I'll add a new blank layer. The stamp that I'm using now is leaf eight, which is one that is in a front facing position. So I'm gonna place this in the front right. And then I'm gonna erase just the inner tip to show that it's coming out from underneath the cluster. Next, I'm gonna use stamp 25. This is another foreshortened one and I'm putting this almost front and center. The erasing of the overlaps here is going to be a little trickier. So first I am erasing the triangle indicator since it's already been placed. And then I'm going to erase just this point down to the edge of this other leaf to make it look like it is protruding from under the cluster. Then I'm going to move to the lower layer with the rest of the cluster. Here I'm going to erase the overlaps to show that this newest leaf is in front. So as you go through this process of building, keep in mind that when you're layering leaves that are in a perspective that is closer to you, you'll generally erase more of the overlap of the cluster layer because the leaf that you're adding is blocking the rest of the cluster from view. Now here I'm at a point where the plant is getting a little fuller, so I can start using more elongated leaves like this leaf 32. So here is an example of where I'm layering this behind the plant. So all I am going to erase for the overlap is on the leaf layer itself.
And now I'm going to turn the opacity down and we're going to paint underneath. I'm going to be using this minty blue color and I am using a new free brush that I have, the Half Minute Watercolor Brush. And on my bottommost layer, I'm going to start painting in. Brush size here is set to 26%. Starting to color this in, making the innermost portion of each leaf the darkest and extending to be the lightest up towards the tip of each leaf. Fill in each leaf individually, working your way around the plant. This brush is very watery, meaning that it behaves as a wet brush, which allows you to push the color around and blend within your brush strokes themselves without having to switch to any other tool. It's also been updated for Procreate 5X, so you can get some super realistic watercolor effects with it if you have updated your app to the latest version. Now I'm going to use the smudge tool on the same brush to switch over. I just press and hold on the smudge tool and it'll start smudging with the brush that I was using on the paintbrush tool. For smudging, I'm having my size set down to about 12%, so quite a bit smaller. And here I just want to start to move some of the pigment around and smooth out any harsh overlaps of color. If you need to, you can hide your succulent framework. It might look a little funky when you do. We'll clean this up, don't you worry. Now I'm going to switch to this pink color on the layer above where I've been painting. I'm turning down my brush opacity to about 56% and then my brush size I have set at about 14%. I'm going to add some pink to the tips of these leaves. Now I'm going in with a smudge tool and this brush smudges quite a bit as it paints, but I am going to just smooth over a couple of these areas. Now I am moving on to the layer above this and I'm going to use this darker version and still using the half minute watercolor brush, I'm leaving my opacity down to about 55%. And my size here, I'm decreasing to about 8%. I'm going to go in and just start to build up a little higher contrast. 
If you need to turn on your framework layer to a low opacity to better remember where some of these places that you need to add shadow are, you certainly can. I have my opacity here set to about 5%. So what I'm trying to do is add some slight contrast, so a little bit of darker color at the outside edges of the leaves, and then at any places where there might be a shadow cast from the other leaves in the plant. And then I'm also adding some dimension at these inner curves. So now I am going to pinch to merge my lower two layers, and then I'm going to make this a clipping mask of that. And then I'm setting the layer blend mode to linear burn. And now to smooth this out rather than blending, I'm going to use a Gaussian blur. So now on this layer above, I am going to change the blend mode of this to add and turn this into a clipping mask as well. And I'm decreasing the layer opacity down to about 30%. And then I'm gonna choose this pink that I used before. And still on the half minute watercolor brush, I am decreasing my brush opacity down to about 25% and my brush size down as well, here to about 16%. And here I'm just going to use really light pressure to build up a tiny bit of highlight on some of these leaves to, again, add some dimension. And then I am going to use the Gaussian blur under the adjustments panel here and slide to adjust this to about 10%. All right, now as a very, very last step, I am going to add a new layer using this dark gray color. I am I'm just going to add in a little bit of a shadow underneath and then I'm going into my Justin's panel under Gaussian Blur and I'm going to blur this out and then I'm decreasing my layer opacity to 40% and I'm also going to select the layer contents of my painting layer by pressing two fingers on the layer and holding and then moving down to my splash layer I'm going to use three fingers to remove any of the overlapping pigment. 